I want to say peace and black power. Welcome to another Sarnetta TV production. I got brother Professor Larry. I got the uh, Gorilla Hebrew in the building, brother Courtney. And of course, the bad boy of consciousness, brother Tahuti, the seed son of Sekhmet. This is what I want the, um, the Gorilla Hebrew to prove and to show some facts. You say that you built the pyramids, that the Hebrews were enslaved and they built the pyramids. Do you have any proof on that, brother? Number one. We don't contend that the Hebrew Israelites built every single pyramid in Egypt. Um, we definitely contend that the, that the pyramids were an Egyptian structure. And during our tenure in Egypt, we erected, we definitely erected some of them because if you were subservient to a nation of people that built the monuments, you're going to build the monuments just as we build these monuments here in America. Uh, there's other evidence of Joseph in Egypt during this time period. An artificial lake was made in ancient times called Lake Morris. Uh, it was formed by a canal running off the Nile River called, to this day, the Canal of Joseph. Beside the lake, which still exists, although smaller in size, there are ruins of a massive building which contained a labyrinth and was considered one of the greatest structures of its time by the Greek historian slash traveler Herodotus. Herodotus. The building had 12 sections reminiscent of the 12 tribes and, and, and might well have been an administrative headquarters for Joseph's uh, uh, agricultural program. The pharaoh of the time was obviously very proud of the lake and the massive building because he built his own pyramid at the site of his burial. Nothing like this complex exists anywhere else in the vast room of the ancient Egypt. Again, the new Egyptologists suggest that the complex is stunning evidence for a remarkable foreign assistance to pharaoh and the tourists in the correct time frame for Joseph. Um, and this section is called the Possible Palace Tomb and Statue of Joseph. One last stunning piece of evidence of Joseph exists, and that brings us back to his burial in Goshen and his bones that were removed by Moses at the time of the Exodus. In the same area in Goshen, where, uh, where a large contingent of Semites live, a great palace has been discovered with a garden and a tomb curious in, the, in, in its combination of Egyptian and Semitic style. Roland and his colleagues believe that the palace is that of Joseph, perhaps his retirement villa after many years of service to Pharaoh. It has two apartments in front, suggesting the living quarters of his sons Ephraim and Manasseh. In the rear are the more spacious living quarters of the prime occupants to have Joseph and his Egyptian wife. Adjacent to the ruins of the palace, there is an elegant garden area, and in the garden was an unusual tomb. The tomb was in the shape of a small pyramid, but it is clear that the vault was broken into and the remains removed. Now that's consistent with the biblical narrative of how we went in and got Joseph's bones, because that was the Hebrew or Israelite form of, of burying the dead, taking the actual bones and putting them in boxes as opposed to the whole body. However, the damage to the tomb was not like that done to all the common graves. Hebrew, Hebrew, yeah. use your um, use your mouse. Let me see where you at, because I turned my head. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, it seems to be a careful and, method, and, and, method, and method, methodical removal of bricks from the tomb, as one would expect where the bones of Joseph were carefully removed from his long-used grave by Moses. 
Could it be that uh, that we have here the very theme of the great patriarch Joseph? The evidence certainly takes it out of the realm of mythology, even for the hardened scientist, and into the realm of accurate history. So, you know, that's just a little bit of history just on the fly that I could bring in uh, to substantiate um, to substantiate Joseph and, and uh, the Israelite occupation, or not Israelite occupation, but Israelite presence um, in uh in Egypt. Somebody in the chat room earlier said, uh oh, here go Larry. Him and Sarnetta hate Africans. They don't want to be African. They hate being African. That's why you got to go on here and you can see the comments. Open up two screens, Larry, and you can see the comments. You know, that's what I got two screens. I really got four screens open. But um, talk to us. Understand. I don't think they understand what this is. Go ahead. You said. Are you African, Larry? Are we our own people? I always there's ask you no this. Such thing, there's no such thing as an African. For somebody to tell you that they're African, that means they're confused. Okay. Right? What I, what I need you to understand is that when you encounter people who come from the continent of Africa, right, the only reason they're telling you that they're African is because they think you stupid, right? They don't tell people who they think are intelligent that they're African. They tell people that they think are intelligent their nationality, their ethnicity, their, their tribal affiliation. You understand? They give you specifics. Now, when just think, the police grab you, right? They start asking you questions. How do you answer? Do you try to tell them details about you? No, because you not really feeling this person is trying to do you wrong, right? Um, foreigners, foreigners regard people in generic terms, right? You don't regard yourself or your family in distant terms. You never tell none of us here that we're North Americans. How many of you have ever told somebody that she was a North American? But we were born in North America, right? So someone telling you that they're African is the same as someone telling you they're North American. It tells you absolutely nothing about the person, about the culture, about the history of that person or the people that produced that person. Now, if a person tells you they're Yoruba, you know... West Africa, probably Nigeria, you know the language, you know the culture, you start saying Ashe, you understand? Because now you, the person is giving you some information about himself. African. They have African lions, African elephants, right? So African people, come on now. Understand, understand what's being done to you and understand what you are accepting, right? You are accepting that you don't know, so they're just attributing you to a landmass that you know the people on the landmass don't identify with each other. They have different cultures, different languages, different races on the continent of Africa, right? The very reason that you think you're African, every one of those people on that continent can make the same claim. So what I'm saying is, how does that say anything about you? Now, if a person tells you they're German, you know they're talking Germany. If they tell you they're European, you don't know where they came from. If they tell you they're Greek, you know they're talking about Greece, English, Britain. You understand? If they tell you they're African, what are they telling you? They're not telling you anything. Because, because a Tuareg a Tuare could tell you that. A Berber could tell you that. A Zulu could tell you that. A Kikuyu could tell you that. A Yoruba, a Nishanti, and they're all different. All of them. So how can it be real if different people can tell you the same thing 
and they all mean something different when they say it. Okay. Uh, I, no, I apologize. I'm waiting for my time. Go ahead, brother. Uh, uh brother Tahuti. Okay. Uh, real quick. Um, I think that complicates the the whole argument here, whether or not we African. I think we pretty much can understand that the word Africa is a Latin Roman word. Um, and then, then you know, then, I mean, from the etymology of the word, we have the word Africus, from the African word afar, meaning an African, or originally, in, and it originally applied to a, a, a region around modern uh, Tunisia, I believe the place is called, which gradually was extended to the whole of the continent. But it only confuses us to try for us at this day and age to try to identify with other words because you've got to understand what the goal is. The goal is to unite our people. You have, and here's the problem with the world. One group of people thinking they're better than another group of people. And that's where the cultural diversity of Africa and the lack of unity in Africa exists from, which is an old age problem. And this old age problem, um, it actually comes in with the changing of the, uh, the, the cosmogony to this all male patriarchal system. The unity and the brotherhood of man, all Africans are African, period. Now, just for sake of argument, we're using the word Africa. No one group of Africans are better than another group of Africans, and they are not different. We may have different phenotypes. We may have different hair textures and different cultural uh, diversity and uh, continuity. But at the very core essence of our being, we have the spirit of our motherland. And not just the motherland, but from all over. So I think the bigger picture is, yeah, okay, we can dismiss the word Africa, but then what do we do? Because we're only confusing the people. And in order to get the people to become conscious, we have to identify with the people. We can work out the, the rest of the mechanics later on, but if we can't get the people to join us by them first identifying with this name African, which our scholars, such as Sheikh Anthony Diop, uh, Dr. Ben, uh, John Henry Clark, and all of them told us to identify with. Because people who are turned black all identify with Africa being their genetic homeland. We need to attract the people, not confuse them. Because we got the more talking about black means white, I'm a white man, I'm a this, I'm a that, now I'm not an African. No, that's only confusing the whole situation and how the hell are we going to get somewhere if we don't get everybody on one page? That's what I have to say. Can I address that? Yeah. See, it's only confusing because you're not telling the truth. You see, the truth is not confusing. The truth eliminates confusion. Right? So now, the confusion comes in because you have people trying to superimpose an artificial paradigm. The people on the ground on the continent of Africa are not cognizant of this artificial paradigm. <laughs> they find out about it when they have contact with people who are foreigners. You understand? I posted an interesting interview that I did with a man, Bingo sister, who tells you plainly she found out she was African when she came to the United States of America. All of her life, she thought she was man, Bingo Mama. What I'm trying to get you to understand, brother, is, you see, you have people form special interest groups, right? within societies. Those special interest groups are the problem. The people are not the problem. 
the special interest groups, they form your power elites, right? So now they have control of nations. They have control of economies. They don't want to relinquish control. This is why you don't have pan-Africanism on the continent of Africa, because you have power elites that are not going to relinquish their power to form a united front against anything. You understand? Now, the people, the people on the ground, they don't fight each other. They don't have problems with each other. They live in their culture side by side like they've been doing for time immemorial. But these factions that have been left in control by colonial administrations, right, they now form these power elites. Now, you have groups that are trying to take them out of power and they form different power elites. They are abusing the people, right? Now, that's the truth. So when you try to take that situation that's the truth, and then from a distance from the diaspora, you're going to superimpose a consciousness that does not exist. That's confusion. Well, would you say that Dr. Ben and John Henry Clark Ashe and all of the others were being disingenuous and misleading us when they told us that we were Africans? Different, different, different conversation, Tahoe. You see, here's what you have to understand. At every stage in the development of a thing, right, if it's progressing, then it becomes more aware of itself. It becomes better able to deal with the world at large, and it becomes more knowledgeable, right? At every stage. Remember, you're talking about a graduation. You're talking about scholars from the past coming forward. So every generation produces scholars. And each scholar stands on the shoulders of the generation that came before. So you take the information forward. You don't leave it. Things change. Look. Okay. 500 years ago, 300 years ago, right? You could hear this phrase. My nigga, it had a different meaning, right? It, you said, okay, my objection to the terminology is not a word. It is the application of the word to yourself when you know how it was used in this society. Now, understand. That's not to say when you're off camera, when you're with the homies, how you talk. Okay. That's to say, that's to say when you are presenting to the world. You see, you have to project power in order to be taken seriously. Look, they drop bombs in Africa. There is 35 million Black people in the United States of America, they don't ask us, can we drop a bomb in Africa before they drop a bomb in Africa? Because this is how they treat us. You understand? Why? Because we don't, if, if, we, if we have a problem with something, somebody over there is protesting, somebody over there is protesting, they marching over there, they talking over there, they holding interviews over there, they write books over here, but they all dealing with the same thing, but they do it in different ways, and they are ineffectual. You understand? Now, here's a, here's a bit of psychology that I would like to introduce to the people who can hear me. We are probably the most copied people in this country. They copy the way we dress. They copy the way we talk. They copy the way we sing. They copy the way we dance. They copy the way we act. They copy stupid shit. Run around and calling yourself niggas. They copy that. If you want to employ some psychology, let us conspire to do some shit 
that's beneficial to us. So they can copy that. The world, the earth standard is brown. Most people on this planet are some form of brown. Don't think that they're related to you just because they're brown. Yeah, I want to talk about that whole African identity concept. And I just want to be frank. I'm, you know, if I ruffle anybody feathers in the chat or anybody, it doesn't really matter. We just got to be frank. It is overwhelmingly evident that the African identity is unsatisfactory and, you know, for us, okay? Speaking from my experience and me growing up, right? Now, you know, and I kind of want to relate this to our previous conversation regarding the youth gang culture, right? Now, when I was growing up, my father, right, my father is of Haitian descent. He told me off top, you, I'm black, you black. That's the number one thing he told me. So that's the principle that I grew up with. The second thing he told me was that we were, we were of Haitian trio descent. Now, as a youth, the only thing I thought that meant was I was a nigga that spoke French. You see what I'm saying? So that identity to me was unsatisfactory. So when I began to see the, 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 the older men around me who I looked up to, all the black men around me who I looked up to who were associated in the community with gang banging, they were selling drugs, they were engaging in the criminal enterprise, I want, that's what I wanted to do because that is the only identity that I saw attainable. Because the whole thing of that whole Af Africa is such a big company, that I can't identify with anything over there. I can identify with what I see around me. So I started, you know, engaging in the gang culture or whatnot. You see what I'm saying? And that's the whole thing about that African identity. That's such a vast and huge continent that just that just saying that we're from over there is it's, it's not enough. And that's why you see our youth, bloods and crips and GDs and vice lords and all of that, man. Because that whole concept is too vast of a concept for somebody to truly get a knowledge and a, and a self empowerment from. You see what I'm saying? And that's why that's why I say it's, it's unsatisfactory. And the whole thing of the whole concept of the Hebrew Israelite and coming into that, the whole thing of that is it gave me an identity. It told me that I was from somewhere. And as I further researched um, uh, 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 the, the, the Haitian culture, and I understood that, that the, the majority of Haitian slaves came from either the farm, the dog, the Akan, or the Walloop slaves of West Africa, which is primarily in the Bight of Benin, but also in Senegal. And then I understood that their cultural uh, characteristics were the equivalent to the child of Levi in the scriptures. So I said, well, this must be where I'm from. Africa is too big of a place to pin our identity. You understand what I'm saying? And that's basically my take on that. And that's, that's real. That's real, but I, I want to say this, right? That being a Hebrew, that not only did it give you an identity, but it also gave you a language. You understand? There, yes, is, sir, it did. there is no African language. There is, there, listen, listen, there is no African language. There is no African language. Okay? When you when you talk, when you when you listen, when you talk in terms of African languages. African language families, you understand? You just, oh, the only thing you have to keep in mind is that you are talking about a continent. I posted a picture on Facebook and I posted a picture of the African continent from space, right? And I put, is your worldview realistic? You understand? It's not realistic to look at the continent of Africa, watch, and find yourself there, right? That's like an ant standing on a watermelon and claiming the watermelon. The ant can bite that watermelon for all day. He ain't never going to have the whole watermelon. I can't yes. wait to see more the Hebrew is an option. Because I've been following uh Sarah through the setting. I've been seeing the polite uh the polite debacle, the understand. These Hebrews, these Hebrews, to be honest with you, the, the, the liberation of the black people around the world, the Hebrews have the total package. These guys are morally, morally intact. They have guidelines. 
their ego ain't going to really get in the way because they believe in the Most High. So if they really follow in their teaching, the Most High ain't going to let them go straight. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Plus, they scholarly. I was listening to some guy from the AOC camp. They ran up against Mr. Royal. Peace for that guy. <laughs> you know, they were IBM. They were IBM very, very up, right? But they have, they, have, they have knowledge, they know their history, and their interpretation isn't from a white perspective. You understand? And it ain't from a, a, a what's, what's the word, a, a, a swingers perspective, someone who's trying to get your, your money, a charlatan's perspective. They actually come with sincerity, you feel me? And their scholarly approach, and the fire that they have, the warrior spirit that they have, that's the package that we need. Because to be honest, it's like, they come across with a good cause of black people, so you can't go wrong with that type of teaching. The, 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 the talk that the, uh, the Hebrew Israelites are supposed to have coming up with, uh, with whoever they're supposed to with Dr. Uh -huh. Ali Muhammad. Dr. Ali Muhammad, I think that topic should be a little different. I think it should be a little different, but the bottom line is the Hebrew Israelites have the total package. The topic probably should be who has the total package for the liberation of black people, you understand? And I think the Hebrew teaching is, is the total package for the liberation of black people, period. You know, we definitely got the total package. I don't understand, and I don't even perceive uh, a way that anybody could possibly refute that we have the total package for the liberation of our people, in all truth and sincerity. I mean, I, I know the brother, I know Sahu, he goes from the you know? I know he goes from the you see what I'm saying? But the whole thing is, like you said, we have the morality, we have the humility, we have all of those things. You see what I'm saying? When I come out, I'm not coming out in the name of the Gorilla Hebrew. I'm coming out in the name of Yahweh Shai. You see uh, what I'm saying? I'm declaring the name of my power, first and foremost, and I'm going to go to the ends of the earth to substantiate that power and the, the divine supremacy of my nation, which is the Black Hispanic Native American. Uh, the reason why I disagree uh, that they have total package, they don't have the total package because. One of the number one reasons is that position on the woman. They do not bring the woman into the supreme equality that both human beings deserve. She is a human being. You are a human being. Why was you created more special than the woman? If the woman is not an equal in our liberation, our liberation will not work. That's why I'm called the son of black man. You know why? Not because it's some gay shit. Because I'm a warrior. I'm showing improvement. To bring the woman as an equal, not above the man, not below the man. She must be an equal in our liberation. Hey, when you don't bring the woman into as an equal, you're no hey, better hey. than the white man. And I'll tell you why. You have what? to learn the history because it never occurred to you that Africans were never raised, the most ancient of Africans were never raised in a patriarchal system. We are matriarchal people by nature. By the nature of our spirituality, we are matriarchal because the multiple is the first in every goddamn thing. You show me, listen, when you're born, your mother puts her dick in your mouth. Your father don't put his dick in your mouth. So why in the hell do you denigrate the mother that gives you birth? She must be an equal. And if she's sure. not an equal, we'll never have freedom. What, what did you watch the video with General Johanna? General Johanna said that he wanted to correct, sorry for cutting you off, brother, but I think he was addressing me because I said it's all wrong, right? So give me one second, hear this. Watch this. Watch this, Mr. Paholi. General Johanna said that he wanted to correct the black woman and the thing that she's doing, the abortions, right. all of the abortions that uh -huh. she's having right now, and he pinpointed the abortion. He don't even, he's not saying that she should, she should be below. The black man. Of course, it should be equal. It's the human beings, and she is the mother and the father, and they come together and they make one. You understand? So I think you're getting the Hebrew interpretation a bit wrong. Because that's the interpretation that I subscribe to. You understand? For the black women right now to be corrected. Because she's doing a lot of things that she shouldn't be doing. She's in the street. Okay. 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 No, 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 no. She she I'm going to show, show y'all. That's what y'all want. She currently has a good side and she's not taking care of her brother. No, she don't have that. Right. Don't got that all wrong. Stop. 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 No, but that's oh. the, 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 the
might have been this girl got another job and took care of That was probably the best thing to like check. You understand? His wife took care of him when he was down. Most of these most of these women they're in corporate America, they're making all that money, sixty, seventy thousand, eighty thousand a year. And they look at us like, yo, you niggas, you can't, you know, you can't take care of yourself, I don't want nothing from you. That's because they have that I'm a god mentality. You know Hold on, that's bullshit. That's no, bullshit. That's and I'm gonna tell you why. That's all bullshit. That's true. First shit. of all, you're not fighting think you're taking your fight to the black woman. It's not the black woman. It's but white thought... supremacy. Oh, here we go. It's white supremacy. That is the culprit here. When you're talking about all of the bosses in the in the neighborhood. You're talking about white supremacy. When you talk about drug addiction and uh, uh, women on welfare, when you're talking about uh, child support, you're talking about white supremacy. You it's are attacking the victims. Hold on, hold on, let me talk, let me talk. I, I listen to you, that listen to me. Right. You are addressing the victim of white supremacy. You're not, you see, the woman is the victim of white supremacy. And when it comes to the woman being uh, uh, so, so, so called a Better than uh, ahead of the black man, that's all bullshit. You gotta understand the rules of engagement was set by the institution of this land. So it's not the woman that must be corrected, it's white supremacy that must be corrected. When white supremacy is corrected, the woman falls in the place of her natural role. So you to be using the energy and the aim off of the energy. And you are correcting I'm correct. Correct the goddamn white man. He's the goddamn culprit, not the woman. Can I adjust that thing? Can I adjust that thing? Let one one blood speak because he's trying to say something, and then I want to address what Tahuni just said. All right. Uh, so you just said when white supremacy is addressed and corrected, who's going to be the addressing and corrected if the women don't know? <laughs> you see, it's just common sense. Who's going to be the fighting, correcting white supremacy then if our women don't know any better? Now, the Hebrew Israelites is a black power. I don't like the term, but I use it. The Nahu, the, everybody else, the RBGs, the uh, Kemetic people, the Egyptology, everybody is a black power because everybody black. Everybody just needs to hold down a power structure and work at home. In their own communities and make sure their brothers and sisters that's doing foul in that community straighten up their garbage and then that way they can come together and when someone comes into their community they can check them and when they go into somebody else's community we can police ourselves in our own community that's the problem don't nobody want to check that community tahuri 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 hold on you gotta let the hebrew go because you went you're going again let the Hebrew get it in. This is what the chance is all saying. This is what the game post is in France. The same exact thing. The same exact thing. To cut back on the initial point of the women and the women and the man's equality and his king, the Bible says, it says in 1 Corinthians 14, it says, let all things be done decently and in order. When you have two people sharing the same role as head of household, that's disorder. The man has to be the head of the household. The man is the proper breadwinner of the household. And that's that's throughout ancient society. You go to ancient society and you see the woman being the breadwinner? No. Is the woman rearing the children? Yes, of course. That is her job. That is her duty. But is the woman, it, 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 I mean, look, I could be wrong about certain ancient societies, but the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, society functions best when the man is the proper breadwinner. When the cracker came in with the whole women's liberation movement, we understand that that was designed to destroy the black household. We understand that. Because, because that put the black body in the whole thing. And the whole thing is this. We do have to fight white supremacy. And the white supremacy system is the reason why our women are in this world. That is very true. But we still got to, before we can totally stop the white supremacy, how are we going to correct our women in the meantime? We have to correct them in the meantime, brother. And, and that's the thing. I want everybody to go and check out the video. I did a class over the West Coast out of time. Shout out to my West Coast niggas, Tacoma, Seattle, LA, all my niggas over there, YG Street, I'm the next, all my niggas over there, Black Power, all my folk gang, all my crypt, my blood, all y'all my niggas, Black Power. Um, 
Can you go check out the black box on black box? Um, you will see that in that lecture, when I was giving the definition and the origin of black power, I included every one of my organizations. I said to my Hebrew brothers, my Nubian brothers, my father's Sinner brothers, my Nation of Islam brothers, RBG. I, you know, and even though me and this brother got some problems, my DPC niggas, everybody. How's the consciousness signal stand up? You know what I'm saying? You know, I might not like the term nigga, but I'm talking to my niggas out there. They know who I'm talking to. Now the even again goes accomplished. Hold on. Right, okay. So in that definition of black power, because I totally disagree with brother for life in this white man in the devil bullshit and black power is not relevant. We are black power. I love the Hebrews. You know what I love about your brothers? One thing I love about your brothers, y'all are the only brothers that are still on the goddamn street. Right. 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 Right.
that gives you the situation in Nigeria. It gives you the Congo, right? What I need you to understand now is that that same dynamic, that divide and rule, was used on us only the woman. Yeah, the woman. What do you think? The position of the man, the man was denationalized because your ass was a threat. You understand? Now, you have to, when I say understand what was done, I mean you have to stop personalizing it and understand it on the community as a, as a whole. You understand? You the highest man a threat. Highest man a threat if we're a threat. If you want to move it forward, right, then we're going to have to start seeing it as a whole. You understand? Isolated communities will never be a threat to this thing, ever. I hear that, but how is the man a threat? Because the man has the seed. If we go around and plant our seed in their soil, then we gonna end up, we gonna end up having and what it's just one plant. That's why. Not only, not only, not only, not only, not only is this a biological issue, right? You see the biology, okay? The only thing you have to understand is that um, to simplify, let's see us as one half of a combatant. Let's see them as the other half of the combatant, and we were on the losing side, right? So the side that won will always feel threatened by the side that lost because the side that won think the side that lost wants to win. You understand? So they perceive us as a threat because they think we're trying to get them back. Now, that's the psychology. The biology is you have one group of males, another group of males, and somebody trying to survive. But then when you talk about then when you talk about the biology of it, then another day another day, most are attracted to us, most know that we are quote unquote longer, stronger in those areas, this, that, and the other, so they feel inferior. And they know we plant our seed, eventually we will take over and it will be more of us, no matter who we plant it in. Hey, uh, it's not just biologically, we a threat to the crack on every level and the facet it actually is you know what I'm saying? So we started to bat it on every level. Real quick, John, or what's your question? Please? My question is the general the general Johanna is speaking. And I don't think I don't know if it's the same or another TV was like the real one, but I was watching it. They mentioned that there was some Hebrew writings found in America, and I guess they dated it. There's a whole lot. There's a whole lot. There's a whole lot. They dated it. I guess dating was like before a lot of the, the pyramids was even built. So I wanted to get some more information on that. The whole thing with that, with the, with the pyramid dating, like in that whole dating system is, I don't, and most Hebrew is like, you're not really subscribed to a lot of these different dating systems because they're extremely flawed. I wouldn't say it's I wouldn't say there's any pyramid in the Americas that predates that of of ancient I wouldn't say that. Another I, point. I wouldn't believe that. Another I, point too. I think it's one of these our brothers uh, we, we, during our captivity in Egypt that we built some of those and we brought some of that knowledge over here to this thing. In making off the culture, did you know uh they are rituals? Sexual rituals in order to enhance your vision to God. The communication to God was through a sexual ritual called Ezra. So women were engaging men in sexuality in order to raise that queen of the serpent up the crown.
of the spine is only activated when you, when you are inserting your goddamn penis in that woman. <laughs> and that woman, in matriarchal culture, was taught in temple how to activate that dark force inside of a man. When, when the culture began to change the male god, now you got fucking homosexuality coming into play because of their guilt from the sexual, uh, the whole, the whole sexual ritual. I know God said sex. How sex has become sex. When sex I has got God to in the Bible. Oh, where did you go? Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. What's the Adam and Eve story about? The Adam and Eve story is about subscribing to doctrine contrary to that given to you by the Most High God. It ain't got nothing to do with sex. It's not true. It's just instrumented to be true for the Most High. How the fuck you going to be true for the Most High? You ain't getting no pussy, man. Come on, that's crazy. You're reading. You know what you're reading? You're reading fucking mythology that has an esoteric meaning. The tree of life. Hold on, hold on. Let me tell you what the tree of life is. But that's why I asked the question having God have sex and God's is not real having sex. Do you believe in real God's having sex?